Hello and welcome back to CK2 Geheimnis with our vampire queen, Nakara Nafarata, whatever. I keep forgetting her name. So, what are we gonna do this episode? First of all, I'm gonna take down this holding. I think that's a good start because that will unify the du jour claim that she has on it. I will do a holy war though. Um, that's a minor one. Um, let's see, we'll have our armies rise up. Let's see, we still have a very low amount of soldier count. Let them move in, then take that. So, I was reading last time a little bit of the god religions, and I think I'll continue doing that, because things are going slow. So what have we got? We've got the... Northern Gods. The Northern Gods are a loose collection of deities, minor spirits, and other beings that we are worldly worship among the nomadic tribes of what would become known as Kislev and the Chaos Wastes. As the realm of Chaos expanded and the Kurgan turned to worshipping crueler gods, the Ogor and Godspar tribes migrated south and settled in Kislev, bringing with them the worship of Ursun, Das, and Thor. Okay. Don't know much about that. I'll be honest. And we've got next, we've got the Kislevite gods. The Kislevites worship a variety of gods, the highest of them is Ursun, the father of bears. Bears are especially sacred to the Kislevites and they are forbidden to hunt them during winter. Ursun has no temples or stubborn priesthood, instead he is worshipped in small natural groves in each city or remote caves in the wilds. Tundras of Kislev. A common offering to Ursun consists of placing a piece of meat or fish in front of the door of the supplicant's house, in order to receive the help and favour of the bear god. Well, that's actually sound. Quite like that, just basically worship bears. Ah, oh, that's, that's, you know. Doesn't sound too bad. Vampires worship upon themselves. Um, next one on the list is Dwarven Ancestry. Ancestral. Veneration of ancestors is a centerpiece of the Dwarven religion and the important part of their culture. Most of their deities are actually venerated ancestors of the Dwarven race. The main tree at worship by most Dwarves are Grungi, ancestor god of mining and stonewalking, Valaja, ancestor god this of the home and healing and Grimnir, ancestor god of warriors. Many other myriads of ancestors are worshipped by each individual clan and craft guilds. Usually they're founders or someone of great importance to them. I always liked ancestry um, as a religion idea. Um, I It just feels to me to make sense, you know? Why pray to um, I don't know, a singular, all-knowing, all-powerful god, and why not... Um, well, praying is a large word for me personally, but why not um, remember your ancestors and um, regard them as um, a people of respect and that you, you know, follow in their footsteps of the great ones um, and try to, you know, become better than them. It just, in my eyes, it feels like you will be driving the entirety of your species forward to, to see if you can improve on the good deeds and wills of your ancestors. But that's just me, and I'm a little bit silly. Um, there you go. Now, before everybody starts screaming out loud, and I'm an atheist, I think that's a uh, form of religion as well. And that's a tricky one. I think, it, I think the funny old thing always is that an um I am not religious in any way, shape, or form. Um, I, but I think being convicted of a truth is in by itself a form of religion because we cannot prove either way that things is. And this become highly philosophical real quick. But um, what I'm basically murmuring at here is that. Um, well, real quick, just give me a second. Um, I cannot prove to you that there is a god in what way, form, or shape possible. Um, we only know, but we do. Religion is not is a common thing among humanity. So, with that, you can use the argument um, that the mind is perhaps a little bit more. But you cannot disprove the existence of a deity. You can't. It works both ways, in my opinion. If you are an atheist, you believe there is nothing, but that's your faith. Your faith is that 
life is life and death is death and that's it there is nothing more special supernatural about it which is a way of thinking if you're for a, a, a christian you believe that there is heaven and hell which also goes for um the jews and the muslims they but they're uh, different interpretations of the same base religion which is judaism um but yeah, religion is, it's, it's, in my opinion, is always a conviction, and that's why I don't really believe anything. Call me lazy, <laughs> but I cannot prove the existence of a god, but I cannot disprove it either. It's agnostic in nature. But it's, in my case, it's not really that I'm... It's, I think that's a conviction as well, that you cannot answer it. I just don't give a shit, to be honest. I don't give a shit if you're religious or not. Um, I think the important thing is that is what you do with it. If you use it to harm others in any way, shape, or form possible, it's you are a despicable human being, and by doing it in the name of religion, it just makes it worse. And with that, I try to say that a religion is inherently not evil, but it can be used for evil by the people who wield it as a, well, basically a tool. I, in my opinion, often to for their own personal motivations. If you look at the Crusades, that was um, religion was used as a motivator for something which had not to do anything to do with religion at all. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, I should really not talk about this stuff, but um, but yeah. That's my opinion about religion. There you get it. Um, right, dwarves. I really need my full army against that, so I just... I really need to get these 11k raised. It's gonna take a while. Luckily, we can get a lot of mercenaries. At least, that's actually... Yeah, there are a few mercenaries we can hire. Most of them are hired, though. Ugh, that sucks. So let's just keep, keep reading religions and fancy religions. Let's see, what do we got? Taillight. Yes, we're running. The god of Tell and Raya are amongst the most ancient religions in the old world. Tell is considered the god of God, the king of gods, and as such, he governs all nature. He is married to Raya, the compassionate goddess of the land, love and fertility. They usually worship in a couple, but but woodsmen and foresters worship, worship tends to favor Tal, whereas farmers, fishermen and lovers favor Raya. The cult of Tal and Raya is popular across the old world, but, but especially so in Talabakland, within Talabheim being the sacred city to them. The priesthood of Tal and Raya is not as influential in the imperial politics as Sigma or Ulrich. Its leadership rotates between two high arcs, one for spring and autumn, the other for summer and winter. That's interesting. Now we've got Urukan, which is now slowly being converted to Tal, so... Uh, it's gonna get a little bit more influence here. So you're the wrong kind. I... Oh, it's all the... Ups. So everybody in here is no longer Urukan. All the leaders are converted. Urukan. Urukan is the god of wolves, battle and winter. He usually represents dressed as an ancient warrior wearing a silver grey wolf pelt cloak. Before the rise of Sigma, Uruk was the patron god of all Teutogans, Tut one of the human tribes that would form the empire. They were basically based on Teutonics. Uh, Teutonics? Whatever. Uh, despite the rise of other cults, Uruk is still very popular in Middenland and is considered the patron god of the city of Middenheim. His priesthood still holds a strong influence in the empire and there had and their head, the Ark Ulrich, is the, an elector of the Empire and right descendant from the former duty of the Ark Ulrich to crown Emperor. To crown the Emperor. There's always an Ark Ulrich landed or not. Okay. Interesting. Um, Jesus Christ, these raiders are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And bigger. They, they are raiders, right? They don't own any, any land though, which is kind of strange. They have a claim for... He has a claim for an empire. Alright. Well, good luck with that, mate. Okay, so... As we are waiting, I'll just as well keep reading some... 
Sigma. I think most people know about Sigma. Um, they call the Sigma as one of the new religions to the Pantheons of the old world, but is one of the most influential. After Emperor Sigma's departure to the east, he was de deified and became the patron and protector of the empire. The Sigmarite faith has an ancient alliance with the dwarves and is on reasonably good terms with most other old world cults. The Grand Theogonist the 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 holds enormous power and with the Arc Lectures of Talapheim and Nuln holds three of the traditional Imperial Elector seats. I think these raids are this guy that is consistently looting my holdings, which is a little bit annoying, but I don't want to waste my army on him, I'll be honest with you. Okay. What's next? Vampiric is... I think we've done this before. Um, I'll do it real quick again. But age of vampires tend to turn the backs on all, any old gods, since anything or any place cons consecrated, consecrated to a deity, even the dreaded dark gods of chaos, can hurt them considerably. Instead, each bloodline greatly respects their ancient founders, bordering out light on worship sometimes. Neferata. Me. Me. Rassam, Abhorish, Vanish, and Urashan are all venerated and feared by their respective bloodlines. In the end, though, only the only god of empire truly believes in is himself. Basically, it's self-worship. Well, we got the lovely, lovely bl uh, blood elves. Wrong franchise. <laughs> Wood elves. The Wood Elves worship roughly the same gods as their cousins from Uthwan, the High Elves. But with some theological differences, the Azrai plays more emphasis on the worship of Kern Kurnus, the hunter, and his wife Isha, the mother. To the Wood Elves, the whole forest of Athel Loran, a temple is the whole forest of Athel Loran is a temple to Kurnus and Isha. But holy places can be found deep in the forest, special clearings which are recognizable only to those who truly worship them. Small shrines to Usurian can also be found through Athaloran, but none close none close the great temples of Uthwan, none close to the great temples of Uthwan. This almost reads like it's been translated by a Google translator. The king and queen of the Asari, Asrai, Orion and Ariel are respectively the living avatars of Kronus and Isha. Are they still alive? Oh, she's been deformed though. This is Da. That's surprising. I wasn't expecting one of these guys using dark magic. You're not married. <laughs> anyway. We got some Gork and Mork here. Gork and Mork. The Greek kids are superstitious bunch, and so they worship a myriad of minor gods, fetishes, but far above these lesser spirits and trinkets stand Gork and Mork, the true kings of the green skin pantheon. pantheon. They are not worshipped in a weak fashion of the other races. Instead, all green skin look up to the deeds of the twin gods for inspiration. In his tales, Gork is brutally cunning and Mork is cunningly brutal. Though the greens can tend to fight over which one is what, as they do with everything else. Shamans are direct, and sometimes violent, contact with Kork and Morg, and are even able to summon them in battle in order to crush their enemies or support the other greenskins. It's Kork and Morg, greenskin magic and all that kind of stuff. War magic. It's super potent. If the orcs knew what they would have in hand, um, how their religion works, they would just kick the fucking ass. Especially if you compare it to 40k, um, for a, give it an example, um, in 40k, a orc bolter um, can be as simple as a box with a pipe welded onto it and a few nuts and bolts and something resembling a trigger and a handle. Um, but the moment it is given to an orc and he truly believes that that thing he's holding is a proper bolter, it will work. That's how powerful orcish magic is in the Warhammer 40k universe. Now, I don't know if it directly translates to. Um, Warhammer Fantasy, but I, th I think it's a guideline to go with as how strong it would be if the Orcs were not so inc incredibly disunified as if they were unified as a species and, um, and truly focus on becoming um, one and unite. Um, I think the Orcs could be one of the scariest things that are out there. Um, 
So yeah, that's forks. Let's go for the grill ones, which is also fairly interesting. These are, of course, very, very minor descriptions of how the religions work. It's a lot more complex than that. Um, I suggest if you want to know more, like I do, uh, look up Arch Warhammer. He's done a lot of videos about uh, religions, uh, cultures, factions, all that kind of stuff, and uh, how they work. Um, and there's, of course, the wiki. Read it up. It's really interesting stuff, if you've got some time. So, the Grail. Lady of the Lake is the national goddess of Bretonia and patron of, and patroness of chivalry. She, she demands nobility, honor, courage, and absolute steadfast approach to all things. All proper Bretonian nobles must worship the lady, and they regularly pray to her, asking protection in battle. Those outside the nobility are forbidden from praying to her under the penalty of death. Instead, the peasants and burghers of Britannia follow other gods widely found throughout the old world. The god of the lady and the priestesses are outside, above and beyond the nobility, and have the authority to issue orders even to the king. The head of the cult is the fey enchantress, and her words and her word is the word of the goddess. She has the authority to dispose and exile only any Britannian noble up to the king himself. Yes, Britannia, it's an extreme, extreme, extreme nation. So this is some... Shailen. The Shailen is the goddess of healing and mercy in Sister Mira, Miramidia. Our most well-known symbol is a white dove with its wings spread holding a key in its beak. Worship of Shailen is widespread all around the old world. It's very popular among the Britannian peasantry. A priesthood is the order of the bleeding heart. Mostly composed by women, priestess of Shalya, are expected to lead a life according to her strictures of pacifism and mercy, and their temples are, are usually hospitals, orphanages, and asylums as well. The head of the cult is the most holy matriarch of Kurngran. Alright? I just happen to know that there is the, the lady is right here. She is the leader of the Grail Knight. So there might be a, a lot of minor religions that I can see on a map that are. I can, I'm, you know, not picking up on, um, sorry for that. Um, that's an absurd request, of course I'm not gonna do that. So how is the army right now? I don't think we're gonna go to war this video, I guess it's gonna be a, nearly two videos of me just reading out some stuff. Okay, what else do we have? This is Sigmarite, yeah. Vampiric. We've got Myrmidon. Myrmidon. Nebidon is the goddess of warriors and strategists, and patroness of the art of science and war. Science of war. Our cult is one of the largest and most widespread in the old world, having formed thousands of years ago after the lands of Estelia and Tylia were united by the mortal avatar of Myrmidia. Um, this remains... The, there remains two conflicting sects, one which holds that she appeared to Estelia and conquered Tilia, and one which holds the reverse. Despite that, statues and shrines dedicated to Moody can be found all around Estelia and Tilia, and their inhabitants invoke her name for aid in times of peace and war. The head of the cult is known as La Ultima Aquila in Estelian or L'Ultima Aquila in Tilian. So one is Spanish and the other one is French. Now, Oh, I need to take a look here real quick. Estelia and Tilia. Oh, right, so this is basically Spain. And this is French-ish, I guess. But they have the same religious base. All right, so what else have we got? We've got some more vampiric here. We've done, the, done those, done those. We're going through them quite quick. I think the next one is Ormazdic. Ormazdik is the Ormazdik is a sole Arabian god, also known as Al Alnun, the One. The symbol of Or Ormazdik is the flame of truth. The origin of Ormazdik is uncertain, but some claim that he was the sun god of the people that would become the Arabians. The cult of Ormazd arose to power thanks to the efforts of mountain sages known as the prophets, who spread the religion all across Araby. Eliminating the cults of other foreign and minor deities. The greatest of the prophets is Mulhat al Qiyat, is credited for first showing the Arabians the teachings of Ormazd. All faithful are required to make a pilgrimage at least once to the holy city of Martek, birthplace of the Mulhalit al Qiyat. The Or Ormazdic priesthood places great value on wisdom and knowledge. It sounds a little bit similar to 
Ecta. Yeah, it's highly similar to. Um, I would say the early Islamic faith. But, yeah, it's, it has shared similarities in their story, in the origin story, that's what I mean. Um, let's see, training grounds, all right, just, you know, kind of just built. How did I do the, yeah, well, just go for the Kopesh barracks. Uh, training grounds. Um... Yeah, we'll just go for the keep then, I guess. Alright, so what else we got? We've got... Oh, this... We've got... I've missed one here. Stormfeld. Stormfeld was crowned in Caprice's god of storms and sea months, as well as the patron of pirates. He's usually depicted as a giant shark. Stormfeld is often seen as the nemesis of Manan, the god of the oceans. Though many whisper that they are one and the same, Stormfeld merely being a darker aspect of Manan. As cultists banned all across the old world, and especially in the Empire, due to its criminal and heretical nature, follows the Stromwell's worship of the god by feeding sacrifices to sea monsters and causing shipwrecks. Though as part of sacrifice to that god is throwing a priest of Manan into the jaws of a great shark. Well, that is... a little bit excessive. So, let's take a look. Is there anything different here? I don't think there is. It's really confusing. Look, it's all yellowish, is it? I think this is Stromfell. No, it isn't. Because Manan is not something I've come across just yet. Is there anything around here? There is no information on Manan? No. You guys are Nurgle. You're cornered. You're bluish. That must be Ulrican. I cannot find any Manan. This is Gorka Mork. Oh, this is something different. A triad. All right, this says. Some ah, uh, the courses. Some of the courses and desert nomads in Araby still cling to the worship of the ancient god known as Marits. It come before the rise of Ormazid. Cling to the nomads the ar atrihaid, the idolaters. They worship these deities in the form of numerous idols of all shapes and colors. One of the gods most favored by the course of Araby is ben Bezin Anan, Marid of the Seas. It is said that despite his effort of the prophet of Ormaz, the god of Benzin Anan persists in the city of Lashik. Nomad tribes pay utmost respects to Beskodan, Marid of the Deserts. Um, oh, we're no longer paranoid. That's really great, actually. Um, he's the eldest of the Marid and on his will, rivers run dry and sandstorms wake and wane. Idols that dedicated to foreign gods like Stromfels and Orcane under different names are not uncommon as well. So it's a shame that we couldn't find Manan. Um, oh, that's not something I want. Okay, so shall we do a couple more? I just read out the final religions and then I think I've got the cut video. I think I've got most of them now. So there's, um, there we are, in Akaran. There are many gods and goddesses in the Akaran pantheon, taking hundreds of different forms. These include natural phenomenon, stars, moons, suns, etc., or animals of the desert. Some of the most important gods are Ptra, the god of the sun, like Ra, Asaf, the goddess of the magic, and, and Usurian, god of the underworld. Which I don't know both of them in the... If you, if you tell me their names, it's like, oh yeah, right. Uh, but I can't just pick them up the top of my head. Most of the gods are only remembered because of the blessing of the Nahakaran armies. All gods related to average life have been nullified since proper life was destroyed by the curse of Nagash. Despite everything, the gods of the Nahakaran have continued to guide and aid their charges. Oh, that's nice of them. Then we got Akha, Ak, Akgan. Akan, Southern Pantheon. Akan means sorcery in the dialects of the human tribes that are in the northern jungles of the Southlands. It's set with a peculiar mix of the cult of Orm Ormazd and local shamanistic beliefs. The Arabian sources, sources that first brought all 
Mazdic religion to the land impressed the locals with their magic, converting them to the cult of Ormaz. Over time, Ormaz and the Arabian sorcerers melted into the local beliefs of animism and shamanism and became part of a spiritual pantheon of the human tribes to the Southland. So it's basically similar to this, but different. This is also a tree. It's, I was, there's no Manan, I guess. Jesus Christ, this guy's still sieging. This guy's raiding my lands, whatever. Um, Atriat, Stromfell, Vampiric, Amazon. That's a new one. Though many Amazonian legends also refer to mythical orc ones worshipped by the Lizardmen as their long lost creators, the Amazon worship other jungle deities and spirits. The most important to them is Rick, the Great Huntress, goddess of war and victory. She is the legendary founder of Amazonia and is usually depicted as a tall, strong woman with fiery red hair and eyes. Serena, the snake goddess of fertility, sorcery and trickery, is greatly honored in spring, where Amazonians conduct fertility rituals to ensure the continuation of their tribes. While the Mian tribes also pay some homage to the Amazon deities out of fear of anything else, they worship mostly their own god. Kuk Kaili, the Great Devourer, a savage and bloody deity of grand appetite. The Mian will often ritualize devour prison prisoners to honor him. So Mian, 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 Mian. Most likely, let's look at the culture group here. Hmm, Mian. So, but they have a separate religion here. These are. Um, Kekali, the great devourer of the bloody Kelis, the Mian tribes of Lustria. Mian legend tells that much like the old ones, Kekali came from the stars, though the legends do not specifically whether it's an old one or something else. The Mian will often celebrate great rituals where they rit ritualistically devour their prisoners to honor their savage gods. It's said that somewhat deep within the jungle, the Mian feed prisoners to Kekali's mouth and his gaping pits full of jagged teeth, while his worship is mostly confined to the Mian, many, esca many escaped male Amazon slaves also turn to worship it as a means to seek revenge against their former oppressors. Ah, uh, well, she be cynical. There's more Amazon going on. We've got the, of course, the massive popular old ones. The old ones are an ancient race of beings who came from the stars. With a power so great that it could shape the world with their whims. Lizardmen, one of the many creations, now venerate the old ones as their gods and longer masters. And try to carry out their interpreted their great plan. The Islam mage priests are at the head of the most important rituals and sacrifices, whilst king shamans usually conduct the lesser divinations. Some of the well known old ones include Sobak, a vengeful serpent god. Um, Kotek, the benevolent sun god, and Quetzal, the great protector of god warriors. Some Gorka Mork here. I guess two more to go. Let's build some buildings first and then um, continue. Um, two more. Alright. Kadai. Kadai, the Kadai are elven gods of heavens, headed by Asurian the creator. The god of Asurian is the most popular within the elven Ulthian, as he is worshipped by all independent of their profession and class. All Asura must make a pilgrimage to the main temple of... Uh, do I have a ward now? Or something? Whatever. Ah crap, I clicked something like that. Anyway. Uh, class. All I still make pilgrimage to the main temple of the Assyrian in the Isle of Flame, in Ulthian at least once. The Isle of Flame is where the Phoenix King is crowned and made to pass the test of the flames of the Assyrian. Besides Assyrian, the High Elves also worship other gods of the Atheon depending on their profession. For example, mages tend to favor with the Lord of Wisdom and Knowledge, while Spith worship Vile, the Maker. The Dark Elves entirely ignore the Kadai Pantheon, while the Wood Elves favor Kurnus, the hunter over Assyrian. And there's one more. So you can actually see if he failed, if this guy is... He passed, I guess. Otherwise he will be, be disfigured. Um, so let's just do a tech real quick. Um, tolerance. So that's the last one. Kathari. Kathari? Kathari? The Kathari are elven gods of the Minari, the underworld. They are headed by Erith Kial, the Pale Queen, while in Uthwan and 
Arthur Loren, they are only to be appeased in small ceremonies. The Dark Elves of Nagaroth openly worship these deities. This widespread religion amongst them is the worship of Cain, a god of many aspects, but especially war and murder. Many small cults of and co covens worship him, but none are better known than the Witch Elves, which constantly sacrifice prisoners to curry favor with their bloody god. Other popular gods include Hecarati, Mistress of Magic, Atharity, Lady of Desire, and Anath Remea of the Savage Huntress. So... Wait. There's another one. Right there. Actually, there are two more. Adarathi and Anathermea. Anathermea is the elven deity who is said to be the sister of Cain and holds the position of being the goddess of the savage hunter. It's believed that she has instilled the joy of chasing and killing victims of the dark elves, which the identity of the prey not being important. Instead, the bloody and thirsty goddess enjoys the thrill of the hunt with any living being prey to her. She said to hold a belt with the hands and heads of hunters that called upon her aid but never thanked her for her assistance. Anathermea is said to have made advances to Cronius only to be spurred by him spurned by him, which is why she is also seen as the patron of jealous lovers who hands down those who've wronged her followers. So is this the same? Alright, this looks like Slanish. Athera is the Sutherian goddess of seduction, pleasure and indulgence. Yeah, Slanish. Uh, is often followed by the sorcerer's covenants of Mana and Grant. She is represented as a beautiful masked elf woman with red serpents tangled around her body. She is greatly rivaled with the sisters of Hakariti, god of dark magic, and both have tried to kill each other on multiple occasions. Dark whispers of her accused Aritic followers of just being one misstep away from outright worshipping Slanesh. Yeah. Not surprising here. So we have that one. This seems to be a different base religion here. No, it's the Athena Remea. But the top is Sistari Kadai, is what we had. I think I've done every single religion on the map. There are a lot more religions, but they're not on the map. No, they're not. Right, so this is one ran a bit, a little bit long. But with that, I want to thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Have a very good day. Bye bye.